From satanic rituals to alleged child sacrifices, the Ancient Ram Inn is home to centuries of dark and mysterious stories. Come and sit by me as we get into the murky history and the terrifying ghost sightings that plague this location. Hey friend, how is your day being today? Are you doing good? Are you staying hydrated? I hope you're drinking your water. If you're new around here, hi, welcome. My name is Claire and I am a lover of all things morbid, mysterious and macabre. I have spent hours and hours absolutely enthralled in ghost hunting TV shows, but you know what I love even more than the night vision footage and the class A EVPs? I love the history behind a paranormal encounter, the origins of urban legends, and the real, raw, personal ghost stories that people have experienced firsthand. So that is what we are going to do. Every week, we sit down and swap ghost stories like a good old sleepover. So if that's your scene, I'd highly recommend subscribing so that you never miss one of our chats. I would hate for you to miss one of these. For today's story, I took a lot of information from the archives of the old Ancient Ramin's own website, which has now been taken down, but like you can still access an archived version of it as that had so much information on it. I've also leaned a lot on interviews with John Humphreys and his daughter Caroline, who currently owns the inn. I would also like to say thank you to Caroline for taking time to chat to me way back in May when we were at one of the Rams open days. She was so sweet, like answering all of our questions, even as she was losing her voice. So thank you very much, Caroline. And if you do have chance to go on one of these open days, like even if you're not interested in the paranormal, but like you're watching this video, so I'm gonna guess that you are at least a little bit, absolutely go and have a walk around the ancient Ram. It's so interesting, like chat to the volunteers. It's definitely worth it. And then obviously like if you're into it, they do have like overnight paranormal investigations too, which you can also book onto. So I want you to strap in because there is going to be a lot going on here. Nestled in the picturesque Gloucestershire countryside lies a pleasant little town called Watton Under Edge. And the village itself has so much history to it with records dating back to 940 AD. But there's actually one building there in the town, the oldest one, that on the outside just looks like any old English pub that you'd find pretty much in any village in the country. But inside, it is said to harbor evil, oppressive forces that leave even the most hard and skeptic questioning everything. We're of course talking about the ancient Ram Inn. Now the first time we drove through Watton and Dredge, it was a few years ago, like maybe like 2019 or something. It was a beautiful like sunny day, like all the people were out, the families and everything. But we knew where we were going and like as soon as we pulled up outside the ancient Ram Inn, it just felt darker. It was like someone had just like turn the lights down a little bit. Like there was no cars when we went past, like everyone had seemed to just disappear. And we were just sort of left looking at the ancient ram in front of us. And it just gave off like a really weird energy. And maybe it was because like we knew some of the things that had happened in there. Maybe it was because it was just looking a little bit tired. It hadn't really been looked after very well, or maybe it was some unseen force. But anyway, it was just really super unsettling to be near the place. And the second time that we went was actually earlier this year when we were in the area and saw that just like coincidentally there was an open day on the exact same day that we were in the village. And by that point, like Caroline Humphreys had sort of like taken it on and was like sort of looking after it a little bit better now. Like I think there was like it had a fresh lick of paint on the outside, like that sort of thing. And that helped give it a completely different vibe from when we were there before. But even with that, there were still some parts like when we were walking around inside where we just felt like, okay, like I've seen this room now, I wanna get out as soon as I can kind of thing. It still had a very like, I don't wanna be here kind of vibe in some places. But let's get into the whole thing, starting at the beginning of this ancient building's history. No one really knows when the ancient Ramin was first built, but the first known records of the building from the 12th century states that it dates back to time immemorial. So while they've got proof that the place was standing back in 1145, it is probably likely much older than that because that's when the records were made. Like no one could remember who had built it and when, like they were sort of asked around was like, the building's always been there. I don't know when it was built sort of thing. And the fact that they've found an old wall that possibly dated back to Roman times, it certainly earned the name, the ancient Ram Inn. So those first records that have been translated from Norman French as like, that's what a lot of the official documents were recorded in, in the 12th century. They state that the building was like originally used as a dwelling for the first recorded vicar named Ger Gerinus, Gerinus, Gerinus? 
Gerinus, I think, <laughs> for the St. Mary's Church. And that church lies just at the top of the hill behind the ram, and it's said to be built on the top of a sacred pagan temple, which was quite a fairly common occurrence back then because they were trying to convert the pagan population into Christianity. So the easiest way for them in, in their minds to do that was to build their Christian places of worship right on top of the pagan places of worship. It's like, well, you go into the same place, you may as well just worship our God now instead. Sneaky. So from 1145 up until like the 1300s, the Ram Inn served as a church house, which means it was owned by the church and would have housed like the masons that finished the construction on the church itself in 1325. So the church was under construction for almost a couple hundred years. And the ram would have likely also been used for things like church ales or what's known as parish ales. And these were basically the medieval form of like a charity fundraiser nowadays. Like you'd go along to the church ale in the village and basically have like a massive party. And the money raised from the sale of the ale <laughs> would go to maintaining the church or helping the poor. So basically for its entire recorded history, it's been used as like this social hub of the community. But as we're gonna get into, it is not all drinking, laughter and festivities. Cause there is some evidence to suggest that before the records began, like even the land and perhaps even the building itself had a much darker past. The land that the ram sits on is said to have been an ancient pagan burial ground from thousands of years ago. And there have actually been skeletons that have been found buried in multiple sites on the property. Which again, it tracks if the church was built on this like pagan worshiping site, they would have had a burial ground near to it, like perhaps at the bottom of the hill, exactly where the ram sits. Historians also believe that the Mayflower barn was actually a Saxon prayer house with graves found close by, like actually under the floor of the inn. And some believe that the skeletons found in this grave are the remains of children that were sacrificed to pagan gods before being buried as fragments of what appeared to be like sacrificial daggers were also found buried with the bones. The bones and the dagger fragments were sent off for analysis at the University of Bristol, where the team concluded Concluded that the bones were just, they were just too old. Like their technology couldn't tell you whether they were animal or human. But they did conclude that yes, those fragments were likely to be daggers that were used in ritual sacrifice. So it's funny that there have been countless reports of apparitions of children running around the property. And with the amount of bodies buried on the land, like it is highly likely that there were many children buried there. And that even if those children weren't sacrificed, being found buried with sacrificial daggers, like that's still some like next level ritual power going on there. And it's a real shame as well. The the sacrificial dagger fragments have actually been stolen from the ram. Like obviously one of the groups or whatever it was that stayed overnight or whatever stole them. And they don't know who it was, but we know obviously that they did find them because they were actually shown on ghost adventures. I think John like showed Zach Bagans and the crew like these sacrificial dagger fragments. So if you do have them, don't be a dick. Like send them back. In 1350, the inn, which at the time was known as the Tan House, it passed out of the church's hands and basically began life as a tavern as we would know it, like serving patrons, food, drink, bed for the night kind of thing. In 1820, it became a brewery property, which means that like the brewers of the alcohol like owned the inn and would serve their alcohol in it kind of thing. And it was at this point that the name changed to the now infamous Ram Inn. And throughout its history, obviously like it passed through loads of different breweries and landlords. And one such landlord was actually a landlady, a woman called Elizabeth Misen, who had been the landlady since 1885. However, in 1902, it's alleged that she was murdered and buried under the ground in the bar area. And obviously while she's long since passed away, she very much remains at the inn to this day. Yep, here we go, getting into the ghostly stuff now. She's known as the blue lady and appears as this like apparition of a woman wearing a blue dress. She's been spotted multiple times wandering around the inn, but she's especially fond of the bar area. Obviously after Elizabeth Misen, there were loads more custodians of the Ram Inn until the last landlord, Lewis Raymond Allen, pulled the last pint in 1967. At this point, the Ram was 
kind of falling into complete disrepair. It had an infestation of Death Watch beetles and it was set to be demolished to allow for the road to be widened. And that was when a man named John Humphreys got involved. So he'd recently left the RAF and he had trained as an apprentice carpenter and was kind of like looking for his next project to renovate. And after hearing about the ancient Ram Inn, he brought the property from the brewer for 2,600 pounds, which in today's money is like 44 grand or like 54,000 US dollars. He moved his family into the derelict inn, which at that point didn't even have running water. Caroline Humphreys, John's daughter, has since said that when she first set foot in her new home at like six years old, it was like stepping onto the Mary Celeste, which if you don't know, is an old ship that was found adrift, completely abandoned. So like cobwebs everywhere and all that. She said that there were like still pint glasses on the bar with cobwebs reaching from the tables to the ceilings and that there were cockroaches everywhere. So that kind of gives you a good idea of the state of the place. And John Humphreys, he was a self-proclaimed skeptic of the paranormal at this point, but all that would change on the very first night that he spent there. His first introduction into what would eventually become his daily life began when he was in bed that first night and he said that he felt a demonic force grab his hands and yank him out of bed, like grabbed him up by the wrists and like pulled him out of bed. Like there's no escalation here, like which you normally find in haunted houses. They start with something small, like knocking or something. Like the spirits of the Ram were not there to play around. In order to pay for the much needed renovations to the place, the family reopened the Ram as a B&B, &B, which had a very specific problem of keeping guests in rooms and not like, you know, escaping out of the windows in the middle of the night, having been scared to death by some entity or another. One terrifying account by a Mr. Barstow described his paranormal encounter when he stayed at the Ram in 1975 with his wife. They were staying in the Barclay room, which is now known as the Bishop's room. As he was getting ready for bed, he like walked towards the wash basin, but was stopped in his tracks. An apparition that he can only describe as like a cavalier soldier walked through the wall directly towards him. And just as suddenly as he appeared, the apparition turned around and walked straight back out of the room, like through the solid wall that it had just come from. In a letter from another guest of the bishop's room, a doctor, his wife, and their young daughter were spending the night. Now the good doctor, he was woken up at 2 a.m. when he saw the black figure of a hooded monk stood in front of the fireplace, right at the foot of his bed. It began to walk up and down the room until it sat down on the young girl's bed. This woke the daughter up and naturally she was absolutely traumatized. She started crying out saying, daddy, I don't like that man sitting on my bed. He did it last night. And with that, the figure disappeared. Not long after that, the family stopped running the inn as a bed and breakfast and seven years of living in a derelict and quite clearly haunted inn just got too much. Unfortunately, John's marriage broke down and his wife and children left him to live in the Ram alone. But I guess he never really was alone. In pretty much every room of the Ram, there is a ghost story. And it's not just cavaliers and monks that reside in the bishop's room. The bishop's room is actually thought of as one of the most haunted rooms on the entire property. To enter the bishop's room, you must ask permission. You need to knock on the door three times and ask, is anyone there? In an interview, John said that he didn't remember how the custom started, only that he was told by an important person that that's what he needed to do, which was most likely like a psychic medium or a diviner or someone that had visited over the years that told him that this is what the spirits wanted you to do kind of thing. And it appears some entities didn't get the memo though, as John has reported hearing the heavy wooden door rattle in the middle of the night, as if someone was trying to enter the room without asking. There's apparently the spirit of an older woman called Mary Ann, who sits in the chair to the right of the fireplace in the bishop's room. She's one of the only spirits that is described as not evil in the whole place. And she actually tries to protect the living from the malevolent forces in the building. As long as you don't sit in her chair. Opposite her in the chair to the left of the fireplace sits her husband. Although he doesn't interact, he merely just watches you. Other terrifying goings on have been reported in that room with eyewitness reports from like a ghost investigation group once seeing a woman from their group get pushed with so much force that she flew across the room and onto a bed behind her. Disembodied screams have also been picked up in the bishop's room and it's supposedly from a man that at some point was brutally murdered by having his head thrust into the fireplace. 
Evidence of devil worship has also been found in that room, including a horseshoe that's sort of like being forced to fit a goat's cloven hoof behind one of the stones in the fireplace. And obviously like a goat's cloven hoof, that's sort of like symbolic of Satan and like satanic worship and all of that sort of stuff. And this was the same fireplace where a mummified cat was found, preserved by the lime from the walls themselves. And this isn't uncommon for old buildings, like this is usually done when the house is first built to ward off evil spirits and bring good luck to the home. I'm gonna guess and say that didn't have the desired effect in this place because even the right Reverend John Yates, who was the former Bishop of Gloucester, just condemned the ancient Ramian as, quote, the most evil place I have ever had the misfortune to visit after a failed exorcism on the property to try and cleanse the building of the evil forces. There have been multiple malevolent entities reported in the ancient Ramian. So let's start with the quote unquote human ones, shall we? Edward is just one of the malevolent spirits that is said to haunt the building, appearing as a very strong, tall, negative entity with dark features, sideburns, and a hat or a hood. So I guess like he might have been the the monk figure that the doctor saw in the 70s, maybe? He often travels around the ram, but is mostly experienced in the bishop's room. And when he appears, he's often holding like a staff and seems to be the head honcho of the whole place. Like when he's around, everyone else backs off. Edward also apparently has a brother, Michael, who is another evil force within the Ram. It's said in life that Michael was a murderer, so it makes sense that he would come back as a malevolent spirit. But with these brothers, like I couldn't find any solid evidence of who they were in life, like whether they were like highwaymen or landlords or whatever, I couldn't find anything. But there is another evil entity that's allegedly not even human at all. And it's reported to attack people in both the Bishop's room and in the area known as the men's kitchen, which is where John eventually used to sleep in. He called it an incubus, which is a male demon that attacks women in their sleep to have sex with them, which is what John claimed happened to him on a regular basis. It could be that he actually meant a succubus, which would be the female version that attacked men. Maybe it's androgynous, maybe it attacks both, I don't know. There is another room in the ancient Ramian that is said to be particularly haunted, and that is the witch's room. The story goes that the spirit that resides within this room is that of a woman that was wrongly accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake. The witch's room is usually where the overwhelming sense of dread and unease is the strongest, with like a negative energy festering into like this overall like not nice place to be. The spirits in that room have been known to be so negative that people have been left with scratches after provoking them and asking them to do whatever they want, which is a really dumb thing to say. Like, be careful what you wish for or congratulations, you've adopted a demon and now you get to take them home. The Weaver's Attic is another paranormal hotspot within the building with sounds coming from the attic in the dead of night. And guests that stayed the night in the bishop's room below would be rudely awoken to the sounds of heavy footsteps and furniture dragging along the attic floor. There's also a story that an innkeeper's daughter was either murdered or hung herself up there and now continues to haunt the area. In an interview, Caroline Humphreys, John's daughter, mentioned that she's not experienced the spirit of that innkeeper's daughter up there, but she has encountered the ghost of a young boy up there before. And I mean, she would know, like the attic was her bedroom when she first moved into the inn in the 60s. So while she didn't really experience anything when she lived there as a kid, she did say that there was some strange goings on when she moved back there for a year as an adult. She would always get the feeling that she should never read her tarot cards up in the attic. One day when she went up into her old bedroom, like she was looking for her dog, she heard this almighty crash behind her. As she was just about to go down the attic stairs just to see what it was, she saw that her bedside cabinet had been thrown and was wedged sideways at the bottom of the stairs. And like, if you look down the stairs, they are like super narrow. Funnily enough, this was the same bedside cabinet that contained all of her books and her tarot cards. Like when they eventually like moved the cabinet out of the way so that she could actually like get back down the stairs, all of her tarot cards, which had been stored in a sealed container within the cabinet, were all over the floor. Like they'd all just been strewn across the floor. The three of pentacles and the three of swords had been completely destroyed, as if someone had like picked them out of the pack and just trashed them, like ripped them and all sorts. The Three of Pentacles represents education and the Three of Swords sort of like represents conflicts, which was ironic at the time as her, her partner and obviously her dad, John, were 
learning and adjusting to living under the same roof at the same time. So the Weaver's Attic is also said to be home to the spirit of a highwayman named William Crewe, who in life used to use the Ramsey and Attic to hide out until the heat had died down. And remember the Mayflower Barn, the possible site of that Saxon prayer house? Yeah, that's haunted too. People have been hearing disembodied voices, things moving about, and just so many light anomalies captured in there. One ghost investigator even claimed to see a seven foot shadow figure rise out of the floor right in front of them. No, that's, that would be my cue. Thank you very much. It's incredible to me that with all of this going on, like almost on a nightly basis, that one person would be brave enough to live there alone for all of these years. Like even as he was getting older and with his health deteriorating with dementia, John Humphreys still lived there alone. Caroline actually told us that at one point John had heard like bumps and bangs during the night and thought like naturally like he was getting broken into like that's how loud and real the sounds were. Apparently he was on the phone to Caroline like waving his like trusty bible around shouting at the intruders to get out fuck off I'm gonna call the police all of this. Caroline reviewed the CCTV footage at the ram and she saw that there were no intruders. All that was happening was just really loud poltergeist activity. So after that, then he was like, oh, okay then, and went back to bed. Like, that's absolutely terrifying. Like after all of those things going on night after night, I would not be able to stand it. John was never deterred though. And like he refused to be driven out of his own home by the paranormal activity, which is like fair play to him. Eventually though, like John had to be moved into a care home to support his deteriorating health. And he lived there for 18 months before his death at the age of 89 in December, 2017. His daughter Caroline actually took on the property after her dad passed away, but the ghostly activity continues as if nothing has changed. She actually now regularly hosts open days if you wanna have a look around and like talk to the volunteers that know the place, or you can even hire it out to spend the night on a paranormal investigation. With just about every type of paranormal activity experienced at the ancient ram in at one time or another and the way you can just like walk into a room and it's just got a, a get out vibe like it's it makes you feel so uneasy it really is no surprise that so many people refuse to step foot in the place ever again and it's also obviously no surprise that so many ghost tours go on there too. But like the overwhelming feeling of constantly being watched by unseen eyes definitely makes the ancient Ram Inn an extremely unsettling place to be. But what do you think? Have you ever visited the ancient Ram Inn and felt something or seen something a little weird? Please let me know your thoughts down below. I absolutely love reading other people's ghost experiences and seeing all of your evidence. It's so cool. And this one took a really long time to separate out, like trying to verify the different eyewitness accounts and pin down like actual dates and events. And a lot of the stories of like specific paranormal entities came from psychic mediums, which I do wholeheartedly believe that there are real psychic mediums out there, but I find it so much more compelling when their stories line up with historic fact, like the case of Elizabeth Miser and the landlady. And there's also lots of people of the opinion that John Humphreys fabricated fabricated stories or was influenced by the years and years of ghost hunters and psychic mediums and then obviously like like with his health deteriorating with dementia and that may be the case for some of the stories but even if some of them were like I still absolutely believe that the things that John Humphreys experienced were real and that the ancient Ram Inn is an extremely haunted place with an incredibly unsettling energy to it. Like even going in the day, really sunny May day, it had spaces in that place that I wanted to get out of. I would love to go back, I think again, it's just one of those places that like, it doesn't matter what you feel when you're there. It does just kind of like draw you back in. And I'm also fully expecting that I'm gonna have to re-record this story as well at some point, because while we were there earlier this year, Caroline was working with a historian to piece together like the history and the paranormal encounters to put together a book on the ancient Ram, which I am so excited for. Like I'm gonna be one of these people that's gonna pre-order it. I, I want it as soon as it comes out. But anyway, please do let me know what you think of the ancient Ram Inn because even for its evil malevolent reputation, I do have a soft spot for the ancient realm. I was like a kid in a sweet shop, like walking around all the different rooms, like seeing bits that I recognized from like watching videos and then putting together like the layout in my head kind of thing. Like it was brilliant. It was a really good afternoon that we spent there. But yeah, like I said, there were still some spots that creeped me out. Like 
even on a sunny day. Anytime we are in the area, we do a drive-by and to have the opportunity to chat to Caroline was brilliant back in May. So I think regardless of how you feel about the paranormal stories, like massive hats off to Caroline, to be honest. Like she's taken on this old building and she's doing everything that she can to try and save it. And I saw that she'd actually had to like auction off some of her dad's things to make money for the upkeep as well. So I think if you are in the least bit interested, if you're in the area or you wanna make a trip, book onto one of the guided tours, do a paranormal investigation there if that's your bag. I'd highly recommend it and I'd definitely say like support it if you can. If you enjoyed this story, I would be forever grateful if you would hit the like button and I would love to see you back here for another story sometime. So maybe, I don't know, if you fancy it, you might wanna subscribe. But that is all from me today. I cannot wait to chat with you more tomorrow. So until next time, sleep safe. Oh God, it doesn't matter. Like all of three people, again, those same three people, I love you. You're gonna be the only ones that see these videos. So it doesn't matter.